What is up guys, you're Riddles, your boy Kagi, back at it again with a new video and in this video I bring you Matty, Matty DCL blogger, one of the biggest NFT experts, early investor in Decentraland and many other NFTs, a trustable individual with a long history of collaboration in the crypto industry, his most recent collaboration was with Gary B. That should tell you how respectable this guy is, a true reference of what is happening in the NFT world and where the industry is moving towards to in all aspects. He has recently launched the biggest NFT keycard, a keycard that allows you to enter different communities and projects with exclusive content, drops, and many more things. Yeah, it is bro. truly a visionary NFT that opens the doors to an entire new idea of how NFTs should be used and will be used. He also advised me how to proceed with my NFT in many aspects. He's an advisor um, to many other projects. And this guy is just a brain, honestly. Look how nervous I am. Like, I know this guy. And now I'm talking and I'm like <laughs> nervous. Yo, Matty, welcome, man. I appreciate you being here. And yeah, I just want to suck the juice out of you so people can learn <laughs> about the NFT industry for sure. Um, awesome, bro. No, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to be here, man. I always love talking to you yeah yeah for sure man you're, you're so chill and i'm like up here it's crazy <laughs> i love it <laughs> all right first thing i want to ask you man i would like to know like who you are like where you come from like how and how do you get into you know the nft industry like this industry is so exciting and when i found you at the beginning and i'm gonna be honest with you i was like okay who is this guy i kind of felt like you know like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about i truly felt like that <laughs> But then the more I read, the more I read, I was like, okay, never mind. This guy, and that was before the Ivan on Tech, all of that. This guy mm -hmm. knows what the hell he's talking about. So I started, um, and I wanted to be honest about that because sometimes we got mm -hmm. prejudice, right, about people. Mm -hmm. And in this case, I had a prejudice. But then I was like, no, this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> so how did you get into this space? And tell me a little bit more about you because I, I think people cool. like to know, you know, where people come from mm. yeah cool so like i i started um i guess working for myself maybe 10 years ago where i quit my engineering job because i got sick of um working in a civil engineering job for two years and i was like man this is just boring right i love business i love making money i need to hustle this isn't hustling um so i quit after two years and then i started some e-commerce and drop shipping and i did that for four to five years and then somewhere in 2017, I came across crypto. I think many people came across crypto in 2017. And then back then had no idea what I was doing, just throwing money at different things. Um, I was probably the reason why Doge pumped in 2017 and, <laughs> right, and chasing, chasing the gains there. But, you know, through that, I learned a lot um, of what not to do. And then very blessed to find the NFT space in 2018, January, where, um, you know, a lot of the portfolio was coming down. And then I was looking for different things to look into. And then I found Decentraland. And I was like, oh, this is cool. You can buy virtual land. Um, I had no idea that these were NFTs. All I knew that they were virtual land that you can buy. Then they had something to do with blockchain somehow. I had no idea how, but it was like, okay, cool. Let me try this thing. So I bought a couple of lands for like a couple hundred dollars each. And then within the next day or two, I remember getting offered double the price. And I was like, oh, shit, this is, this is cool. I can like buy and then sell and then stack my crypto without putting more fiat right and then i was like oh man this is this is serious this is a big thing because at the, at the point where all you do is just hold your crypto i'm sure other day traders trade and, and accumulate crypto that way but i'm not a day trader but i was like oh maybe i can buy and sell nfts and i love buying and selling stuff like buying and selling stuff at garage sales or yard sales or ebay and i love that stuff when i was back at school so this was like the digital version of that. And so I took it seriously and I quit uh, my job. Um, I, I just found like a, few, a three to six month employment contract because I got married in 2017. So I was like, oh, you know, I need to get serious. I can't do this DJ and stuff. <laughs> but then I quit that again after um, I remember being on the on the train to go to work and there was this land deal on my phone. And I was like, oh man, I could, I could flip this quick for like 5K profit. Oh, and see. then it hit me. I'm like, why am I going to work for $200? when I could be at home flipping this, and that's my month salary. It just didn't make sense. So I quit again and then focused full time on this, and then you know just bought and sold Decentraland land for a year or two, just like a madman. 
And then as the NFT space grew, I got more involved in art and gaming. And then, you know, the Twitter grew, the YouTube grew. And then I became just someone that's, I just kept doing it for fun. Because at the end of the day, at the core of me, I'm just doing this to enjoy the space and, and you know, not take it too seriously. Mm-hmm. But now it's it's like so much is happening. And I, and I love to comment and connect with everyone that's also been in the space for a while, like UK Gi and others. And there's just so many things going on. So now it's just like having discussions on how we can get involved involved in a holistic way and continue doing what we like to do. Absolutely, man. Th- that's um, that's one of the things that I connect with in, in the sense of like, it has to be fun. It has to stay fun. I mm. want it to stay fun. I want it to stay raw. I know things are going to change, mm. but I want to grasp to this idea that things can stay fun with high mm. value assets. Oh shit, yeah, I just sold a $500,000 uh, uh, land. Ha ha ha, you know, like, wow, maybe I should have waited for 1 million, like just joke about it. Who jokes about that in, in the traditional, mm. you know, like real estate? Nobody jokes about that. Like, you know, mm. th- people don't joke about it. These are suits, you know, you walk in, you sign a paper, but here it's just such a, such a beautiful thing to be able to, you mm. know, handle these assets and then just joke about them and troll. Right. Yeah. For me, that's that's amazing. That's amazing. And the fact that people like Gary Vee that are coming in and they're coming in under the, you know, under their ego type of thing. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And they're saying, OK, let's search for the people that are here and are bringing value to this industry. And we want to connect with them. There's a lot of them that are doing this, but there are a lot of them that are not doing this. And I've I've heard you, mm. you know, not heard you, but I I seen you tweet about it. I heard Gary Vee in your show as well talking about it. People that come in and out. Um, but I I think more people are gonna come in like that too. Um, but also come in like Gary Vee and like Tom by you, right? Uh, Bill, you um, that mm. also came in like searching like the the deep, you know, um, corners of the NFT world. Mm. And I truly appreciate those people because. <laughs> You know, the other people that just come in, they just, it's just a cash grab. So you got to be careful with mm-hmm. that. Let me ask you, what other games have you invested other than Decentraland? Um, that so you see I've... potential and you have invested? Mm-hmm. Actually, Infinity is one that I've invested in. Um, so what I learned a lot in 2018 was that all these projects, they come, they provide some hype. Everyone buys their NFTs. And, you know, after three to six months, the hype dies down and then they're worthless. That's what happened so many times in 2018 and 2019 that, you know, it made me a very, very conservative investor. And so even Axie Infinity, I, I didn't get involved for two years. I watched them grow steadily. And I and I, you realize something when you're observing business for a while is that steady growth usually leads to like exponential growth. Um, growth at some stage. Mm-hmm. So Axie Infinity has been growing steadily for you know one to two years, and sometime last year in September, I think, I was like, man, this is this thing is just going to keep going. And there's always a point of like exponential growth that happens. So um, and it never comes <laughs> down. Like, yeah. When. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I I'm talking about the user base, right? So the user base was growing mm-hmm. steadily. Not so much the prices. The prices. No, no. I mean, it, even in the user base. The like they went on, yeah. but people don't leave. They kind of just stay. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a good and, and also pump I played Axie in Infinity. Infinity. Yeah, man. Um, I also played Axie Infinity and I remember getting addicted and I was like, man, this is a good game. Like they figured out how to not only invest, but also play the game and get hooked to the game. So Axie Infinity is something I, I invested um, and, I, and I play a little bit here and there, but I like it, you know, right? I, I like, I invest in things that I enjoy and that I actually use. Um, and then there's, and then I have art. So art for me was a big learning curve. I, I had no idea what the heck art is. I don't know. I didn't know how to invest in it, uh, how they appreciate in value. So I watched a few YouTube videos and people were showing how they became billionaires investing in traditional art. And they were like, you know, we just supported the artists that we liked. We just made sure that the artist was someone that kept growing. And, and in time we got better and better at it. And you know, their idea was to have a diverse portfolio because if like a handful of artists do really, really well, then, you know, you could, you could do really well with your investment. So I'm talking purely investment, obviously supporting the art industry is one thing. I'm talking about purely investment. Um, that was an area I wanted to explore. So I picked up some early art from Ferocious, um, some very early art from other people. 
who now have gone on to do big things, but I love the art industry now because it connects very well to the metaverse, like Decentraland and hopefully the Sandbox, etc. because artists and creators are what's going to drive this fantasy world. So why would you go live in the metaverse when you can do all the stuff in the real world? Mm-hmm. You're going to go there because it looks nice. It looks like mysterious. You go to this enchanted forest or this floating island or like, you know, an upside down ship with like meetups or something crazy. It's going to keep you in there. And artists are the ones that have the imagination to create all that. So for me, um, you know, art is one thing that ties it all together. So I wanted to learn about that. Um, I wanted to actually help promote the art industry, but it doesn't need me. It, it did its own thing. Um, but yeah, man, like I invest in that. I've got some sandbox. Um, I've only got like maybe a handful of different projects that I'm deeply invested in. And then I try and merge them together and, and work so that they all compound in, in like growth. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, those are growing. The Sandbox, the Central Land. Um, I almost bought a land in the Central Land. Didn't really convince me. Um, but I do enjoy mm. being in there. Not as a as an owner, but as a user, which is different. I, I don't mm. want to build something. I think my mm. time is um, uh, better invested in, in actually educating rather than than creating you know too much putting too much time into those worlds like that and me actually building stuff but i do see a lot of cool stuff in the central land um and i i didn't just want to like um buy a land and just flip it right i could have done that i'd done that many many times right but i didn't i didn't want to do that i just wanted to you know explore the i go and troll with random ass people um they, they started talking about crypto and like weird like stuff like oh my god this is pumping and you're like that guy's a noob you know like <laughs> It's it's super funny. Now let me ask you something. <laughs> Art, in my opinion, is a little bit oversaturated, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I think. Um, my dad comes from uh, where I'm at right now. This is full of art right here, right? My dad sells art in real life. Wow. Um, That's cool. So I understand art to like the to a fundamental like level. I grew up my whole life mm-hmm. in art, fine art, right? Um. Now, That's pretty cool, bro. Even, that? even in fine art, it's saturated. It's crazy. And now with NFTs, it's even easier to saturate it. It's like in two seconds, mm. you could be like one million <laughs> NFTs, right? And that's only going to grow. That's only going to grow. Mm. And then it's going to get super annoying. And people are just going to start sending you stuff to your wallet to like, you know, saturate your wallet. You're not going to be able to find anything in your wallet, like, unless you actually click through the projects. Um, Advertisement is going to come, you know, you're not going to ask for the advertisement, but it's going to come to your wallet automatically. You're going to see there, like, Chick-fil-A or McDonald's, like a little, you know. True, true, man. Like, and they don't even have Mm -hmm. to pay for it, right? They don't even have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So art is saturated, NFTs is saturated. How do you go about finding nfts you already said um you see the growth little by little but i'm sure the time has shortened now like you can actually Mm. identify because i can in many cases when it comes to gaming if something has the sauce to make it right or has the Mm. potential to make it um how do you do it how do you go about you know researching an artist because obviously you're well invested in art so Mm. So when I um, started in art, I was kind of late. You know, you know, it had been already two years as the art industry had grown, but it was starting to show signs of mainstream artists also getting involved. So traditionally, I think it was mostly crypto people and, and a handful of others that were experimenting. But now, you know, people with art Twitter accounts in the 20,000, 30,000 million some, sometimes were getting involved. So for me, it was like, okay, this is cool. What do I do? do here so what i actually did was i actually reached out to some artists that i thought were going to do really well and i bought art from them at a very early age uh, at a very early stage i bought their first pieces and i helped them um, and guided them to onboard into super rare or non origin so i was like all right you fill this form out um you know and and this is how you know john advised me that you, you know you make sure you fill it out these certain areas and so I helped them. They helped me by giving, not giving me their early pieces, but by me, by selling their early pieces to me. And now for the history, or now for the rest of the career of that artist, they they were going. If they did well, then my pieces would always do well because I always had the first three to five pieces. Yeah. So I remember for with sure. Ferocious. 
with Ferocious, um, I didn't do that. But I remember the first piece of art that I bought, or one of the first pieces, was because it came with a physical, right? There was a physical canvas and there's also a digital canvas. So for me, it was diversifying my risk. I, maybe the NFT industry doesn't do well in the art space, but at least I have this physical piece. Um, maybe the physical industry doesn't do well, at least I have the NFT piece. But then after I got into Ferocious, I was like, wait a second. If Ferocious does well as an artist, surely he's going to start supporting the other artists in his network. So I went and, and got all the other artists in in his network onboarded onto Super Rare or onboarded into these um, some of these platforms and advised them to start selling NFT art. And I b- bought their pieces as well. So for me, yes, there's a lot of craziness going on out there, but you can you shouldn't be doing what everyone else is doing. You should be doing something else. You should be looking for opportunities where you can get in early or can get into something different. You can explore a new space. If you're just buying just because, you know, it's an open edition and millions of people are buying it and you're just one of the other one of the other person that's also buying it. Personally, I feel that if you're in a space where you're in the what the majority is doing, then usually that's not a profitable space. You want to do something where not many people are doing. So you want to find those hurdles that are too big to cross that others are saying no to, but you can say, wait a second, if I cross this hurdle, then I'll be the only one doing this. So that's why I was reaching out to these artists really quickly, getting them onboarded, getting their early art, and then maybe putting them into my Decentraland land so that when I have conferences, people can see their art. And now a lot of them have gone on to do quite well, not because of me, you know, they've gone on to do good things um, themselves. But for me, it's been like, it's weird to see the strategy play out exactly how I kind of planned it. Um, usually it doesn't happen like that. But you're right, man. Right now it's really saturated, but it, it kind of went like this and it kind of dropped. And, you know, when things are like this, everyone's buying and that's probably not the best time to buy. But now it's kind of dropped a little bit. So actually now is a good time to kind of go look out there. And if you have a long term vision for certain artists, maybe you might be able to pick up something good. But at the end of the day, man, it's like, what do you really enjoy? Do you want to flip it? If you're going to flip it, then you're putting yourself at risk into buying something that you, you don't know whether or not people are going to like this. Mm-hmm. But if you're buying it because you like it, then mostly others will also like it. So like people, art, you know, people like his art, ferocious um, art, which is now selling like half a million dollars a piece. Um, you know, certain artists that have um, a lot of support and a lot of community that love their art, you know, and you like their art as well. That makes sense. But yeah, man, I'm I'm personally learning a lot about the art world. This is all new to me. But for me, it's always been about finding a pathway that others aren't doing yet. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let let me ask you another question that is very, very. Um, it's something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and you say it a lot too. And obviously, the meta key is uh, it represents um, this question: like, are artists not thinking outside of the box enough? Are they not collaborating enough? Because I feel like there's so much good art, right? And I understand that some people are like, yeah, well, in the traditional world, you only look at art. And in my opinion, it's like, well, we're not in the traditional world. That's the whole point, you know? So mm. why limit yourself to only having art as, as display? I'm not saying there shouldn't, that everything needs utility, but I feel like mm. um, that we need to, artists need to like push those limits, right? Uh, try to find mm. people that have podcasts, right? people that have YouTube channels um, and be like, hey, yo, I'll make a piece of art, right? And then this piece of art is also a key, like you did, right? It's also a key. Mm. And now that piece of art has utility, right? And then you could do a collection of, you know, maybe my tier two of NFTs will be, you know, I'll find an artist to actually do it. The first one I did it myself because I I was testing. But the tier two, then I'll go find an artist. But I feel like not a lot of artists are actually doing that. Um, what is your position on that? Do you actually did you actually get an artist for the meta key? You did, right? I had Alan Bolton who designed the first one, and then Artifact Studios designed the second one, and I have another artist who's gonna blow your mind because it's gonna be an AR augmented reality. Gonna, you just got it right. Third one. You just fucking you're ahead of the curve. That's the thing. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait. I can't wait till that one drops. It's the cool. He sent me the draft design. It was the coolest thing ever. But um. Utility, you're right, man. But the thing is, I think the space is so new that artists, when they come in, they like to just make art. It seems like they just like to do what they're passionate about, just make art, right? Make mm-hmm. art, sell art if they can, uh, just talk with their community, have fun. 
to get them to try and integrate things, I think is, is a tough thing to do just because a lot of them may not want to do that. So that's why the Mediki project was actually created because, you know, there's all this art in Nifty Gateway now, all these multi editions and open editions, and that's great. And maybe they will appreciate, but what if we had this virtual universe and the real world where all that art was integrated as not only art, but utility tokens across you know, the space. So for example, like Justin Blau, how he's got the uh, club in Decentraland, you use his art to get in and then he plays unreleased music, you know, things like that. You know, these these artists can have clubs, these, they can have meetups, they can provide more of a service to their community. So the meta key was to kind of, in some way, pave the way to show that you can do this with um, an ERC-1155 or a 721 or a token. You can actually put it in the metaverse in Decentraland and, and you know, it can open a door to an access. We can put it in a Discord server. You can have an exclusive Discord for your fans. You know, you can do all these things. And so hopefully as I keep integrating it, it'll inspire artists or other projects to to add this utility functions. And hopefully in a year or two from now, um, you know, artists aren't just dropping art. They're, they're dropping art, but also like ways to serve their community in, in all these cool ways. So you're right. Um, I think I think artists need to be inspired a bit by people that are a bit more um, nerdy like me and like to like play with utility and others that experiment with like the development side of things. But after that, the cool thing is that, you know, artists can always just turn around and be like, hey, you know, all those thousands of people that collected my art in 2018, well, now I'm going to have a new thing for them. So they can always add utility to their two, three, four year old NFT project, which is the coolest thing about the space. When you have that NFT, you'll forever have that NFT, mm -hmm. all right? As long as the Ethereum network exists. So you can always, it's not like you dropped something wrong or you did a wrong strategy. You can always come back and, and redefine or, or tweak that strategy. Absolutely. And obviously you touched the point, as long as the Ethereum network exists, for me, it's gonna exist, right? Some people want it to die, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But there is a lot of blockchains with a lot of, you know, propositions, right? So are you excited to go into other blockchains? Like to actually explore the blockchains? I know you will. I, I know you, man. Like the way you, you, mm -hmm. you tell me, you know, you're trying to find the, the new thing here and there. Um, I think you're going to go into other blockchains. Now, how mm -hmm. are you going to go about that? What other blockchains are you are you even looking to other blockchains? Because I did it the other day. I went into Binance, bought the first NFT, one of the first NFTs on Binance. It was it's called BNB Bunnies, and I flipped. You know, I bought fifty. I bought. I, I sold like three or four, and I I made my money back, and I have them there, right, chilling. So I did what you do, mm -hmm. right? So I kind of like you know, kind of mm -hmm. like let me try something new. So is there anything new that yeah. you're trying lately? Uh, funnily enough, I'm also trying. BNB, um, I love it, man. It's like so easy to use. It's like you, there's like zero gas fees. You click something, it's in your wallet within like 30 seconds. You know, the user experience is pretty cool. Um, and I looked at the, I looked at all sorts of weird, weird new projects, and there was like this, this crypto punk knockoff called Bunks. Uh, and I was like, man, what the heck's going on here? There's like moon cats knockoffs, and I was like, <laughs> a weird space. <laughs> But the reality is that as, as a, you're right, man, as a blockchain, um, Ethereum, whether it stays king or not, I don't really care. All mm -hmm. I care about is, you know, Ethereum has its own community. It'll serve its own community. Binance will serve its own community. Um, you know, Dot, Polkadot will serve its own community. I'm definitely excited about how these integrate and solve problems like maybe bridging ecosystems so I can take my NFT across all of these platforms. But they all provide benefits and they're all necessary to evolve the space like mm -hmm. you need binance to release a smart chain for ethereum devs to be like oh shit like we gotta start innovating more right we need to start doing things more and then Polkadot launches and then like you know these other blockchains come with the better technology scaling solutions it, it forces everyone to work harder and i think it's very important but definitely we'll be exploring so far i've done binance i need to look a little bit more into Polkadot. um but at the moment just focusing on the meta key getting some integrations out but uh, i'll be back to uh DJ and Maddie in about two weeks from now. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, you know, I was checking out Solana. Solana looks like, uh, mm. um, you know, there's a there's this thing called uh, Star Atlas. This game, I don't know if you heard about it. 
Star mm-hmm. Atlas, you know, uh, yeah, they're doing. They're. I feel like they have the right idea here. They have the right idea. They're releasing content um, little by little, and I'm actually reading a book on virtual economies. Uh, very very good book. Um, focus on gaming, and one of the things that they say there is that you want to stretch content, right? Um, you don't want to. You in the content, there's rarity, as well. You don't want to give content mm. right away. Like, w- that's one of the things mm. with the central line. You go in, and there's a lot of things. And then your mm. hype level the next time you go in, it's not the same as the first time mm. because it's not stretched out over time. Right? Um, mm-hmm. So you get too much at the same time. So, you know, it's like you, you're over you're overdose with, with content. So it's like the next time you walk in, you're like, okay, cool, whatever, right? Um, so that's one of the things that, for example, Star Atlas is doing little by little releasing content. The first content was uh, an NFT art collaboration um, with another artist, uh, music artist. And then on top of that, that NFT art also gives you utility in the future within the the game. So they started with that. And then that is going to transition into a mini game. And then little by little, they'll, they'll, they're stretching out the content until they reach right the, the mm. final product. Um, so I think uh, that's very interesting there, and I think Axie Infinity as well has stretched style content, and you can tell by them just mm. only selling one fourth of the land, right? If they would have sold everything, and I see that in a lot mm. of projects, they sell everything, and then there's no hype over time, right? People kind of just like, oh, it is what it is, right? Um, mm. I don't know if you had that in mind, if it's something that you look into when you go into projects, and you kind of analyze if everything is already sold. Um, how how do you how mm-hmm. do you go about that? A little bit. I mean, I do look at whether or not. Okay, okay, they sold all this stuff in the pre-sale. How are they going to keep interest for the next wave? Because mm-hmm. you know the first wave was excited because they got something exclusive. What's the formula to get the next wave as excited? And that's been a, a big missing piece for a lot of projects, where it's like, okay, well, all these first investors got their pieces, and now they all don't want to be diluted. But we still need to grow the project. So how do we get them involved? I know crypto voxels, when they sold their first Genesis um, land in the center, they started making islands and selling more land. So the Genesis investors were pretty annoyed. But at the end of the day, you need to onboard new artists, and they're not going to pay you know ten thousand dollars for a piece of land. It's tough to do that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. Moving forward, there's a fine balance, and I think that's that that space hasn't been really found yet. But I, that's why I, I, I kind of like what Axie Infinity did. Um, I don't know what they're going to do with the land sale. That's an interesting one. But I know, like, okay, well, if you want to buy... There's, there's, what Axie Infinity did really cool was they separated the investors from the game players. So you can come and play the game, you can pay, pay a little bit of money, get, like, some cool Axies, and you can compete based on your strategy. Or you can invest and buy these Mystic Axies or Origin Axies that have nothing to do with gameplay, not much. Mm-hmm. Um, like they're not OP or anything. Not yet. So you can buy them, but they will be. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but I'm sure that's. But they like it's been three years since they've, you know, they haven't done anything with. I'm not sure if they've done anything with like evolution and all that stuff. No, so I'm sure they're yet. thinking very deeply into. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of things right. there. You know, like that's gonna, uh, you having a mystic axe is gonna boost you in many ways, uh, that we don't know yet. Mm. Like I don't even have information on that. Um, so, so yeah, absolutely. They did separate. So the people that held their mystic, they're in for, for good. They're in for good. Mystics are, uh, are blowing up and Axie hasn't even done any advertisement, which is one of the things that I kind of like, you know, that I'm most amazed by because you see the sandbox and I feel like the sandbox mm. is one of those that is just kind of like oversaturated right off the bat. Right, they're not stretching mm. little by little. They're just going full degen, right? YouTube mm. ads, all of that. So I don't know how that's gonna play out over the uh, over the long term, right? Because people mm. are like, okay, yeah, I, I'll just get in the next so or I, 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 and there's so many characters in the sandbox that how how does a small investor come in and and says, you know what, I'm gonna put five hundred dollars in this character. Well, guess what? There's 500 other characters so mm. how do you you you, you need you would need a, a bigger pool of money to buy 
three of each characters from the 500 characters there is. So you can flip, mm. keep one, you know? Mm. Um, and I feel like that's missing mm. in the sandbox. That's one of the things that's missing in the sandbox. I don't know if you if you have mm. noticed that. You know? Well, the sandbox hasn't really started gameplay yet, mm -hmm. right? You can't you can't actually meet up. So yeah, it's interesting. It'll I think we're such at such early stages with Decentraland, Sandbox, Axie, or any of these projects that two years from now it's going to be way way different. Mm -hmm. And this phase, I don't think it will matter too much because they're going to have their own separate users and they'll be, you know, fine tuning the experience for them two years later. So I'm, I'm more interested in like, how are they doing it? What they're doing and seeing it all play out just on an experimental level. But, um, yeah, I, I do understand the, um, the, the kind of the coolness in just drip, drip feeding information or drip feeding content. I know in Decentraland, you should do a one blog post once a week. We used to wait, every saturday or sunday for oh that, that that's because i wasn't there that's the thing right so you guys did experience that <laughs> that process of building yeah. little by little and kind of like being attentive like oh holy crap something's coming you know yeah <laughs> but with decentraland it was like i don't think they they intended to do that it's just it just happened that way in the sense of you know for two years there was nothing to do in decentraland apart from just flip land as a user <laughs> Uh, there was no land to actually do anything with inside. There was just, you know, you go in there, you buy a pixel, you flip that pixel based on speculation. But um, little by little, they were like, oh, we just partnered up with, you know, this new company. And you'd be like, oh, cool. And in your imagination, you would think, oh, well, this is what that might look like. We just have to wait. Mm -hmm. So now, you, you know, it's been released and there's content going, but they still haven't released. They don't release much feature blog posts like, oh, this feature is going to come up here. This feature is going to come up there. And, I'm a bit salty about that sometimes because I'm like, oh, you know, you can do so much to engage the community if you just let us know what's coming up. But um, yeah, man, like different projects just tackle it different way. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree that this stage doesn't matter that much because this is like uh, we're in a niche within a niche within a niche. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, crypto is a niche. Then you got NFTs that is a niche. And then you got gaming that is a niche. So it's like, Dude, we're we're like deep in the rabbit hole. So when this thing blows up, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. It's uh it's relative, you know. Like you might have a hundred ninety a hundred. I think the sandbox is gonna have a hundred forty thousand, but if you have a hundred million players, like a game like Call of Duty, that's still rare, right? Versus the amount of demand there is, the people that that are there. So I understand yeah. that. Right now, we might I might see it like yeah, there's too many out there, and it doesn't really matter if the if the focus is um, in the long term, which is something mm. that I think is gonna play out good, like you said, absolutely, and um, it's gonna be one of the first projects too, the central land, um, the sandbox. It's gonna have that value too, that value uh, proposition. Like mm. holy shit, th those people were here. They 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 went through the through the gas fees, through the BS, through the people yeah. complaining, right? Um, like you know. So, so I agree. I agree. Um, things will will shape out in, in a good way. Hey, bro. I think we have um, mm -hmm. we've been here 33 minutes. I don't want to take uh, any more of your time. Um, I think um, honestly, I feel like I wasn't prepared for this um, for this interview. It's one of those that sometimes I, I just go try to go with the flow, and sometimes I, I you know I I feel like I miss some things for sure. After this, I might be like, yo, I should have asked him this, 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 and that. So, but it's all good it's all good man i think uh uh you and me and many others i don't see us as mm -hmm. content creators as um youtubers and i said it the other day we're nft historians mm -hmm. that's what we are we're we're documenting Ooh, like this whole process that's what we are we're gonna look mm. back to this, and it's gonna That's be like, cool, "Holy man. crap, these guys were talking crap!" Like, you, you look at Joe Rogan's like first podcast in a couch, all messed up, like talking to some random ass guy. Like, bro, you look at that, you're like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, this guy started from nothing, like from like just talking crap, mm. whatever, you know. So that's how I feel. Uh, we're gonna look back. I can go back years. and watch your um, early YouTube videos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, bro, thank you for being here, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I wish you the best with a meta key. For anybody that wants to follow DCL Blogger, I'm going to leave the links down below for his uh, Twitter, YouTube, the meta key as well. You can buy it. Um, I think it's in the secondary market right now, right? Mm -hmm. 
Um, the first one is in the secondary market. The second one is still there's 200 left out of the 750. I'm trying not to sell too many because I just can't keep up with all the new people coming in. So we want to build the product a bit and then start selling more. But yeah, you can jump in, buy one, join the Discord, verify yourself, and uh, start uh, contributing contributing to the community. Absolutely. I actually have to jump into that Discord. Um, I never jumped in because you told me like uh, at one point, like a couple months ago, you told me like, oh yeah, I'm not really paying attention to Discord right now and all of this. So I never jumped in, but now I'll jump into your Discord. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Thank you for, for awesome, giving me bro. your time, man. I appreciate it for real. Uh, much love. No worries, man. It's always fun to talk to you, Kegi. All right, bro. Bye-bye.